Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall. I'm in Northern California. It's Thursday, 126.17. I want to open up this video in prayer, and we're going to go to the Word of God. The Holy Spirit has stirred up a fire in me to contend for the faith and stand for the truth. There's so much deception on YouTube, some intentionally deceived, and others uh, unintentionally deceiving, and others just blinded. And so speaking the truth in love, I want to bring forth the word of God to for correction in love, humbly. Uh, you know, what's been stirred up inside me from, from the, the kingdom of heaven is to get on here and tell the truth. This video is not about any one person, any one channel. This is about the word of God. So Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, let, let me decrease so that you can increase. Make my tongue like a pen of a ready writer. Lord Jesus, pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Speak to us through your word. Dear Jesus, we we're coming to you this morning, seeking the kingdom of God first and all your righteousness, Lord. And we want truth revealed to us through your holy word to counter deception, Lord. You stirred up this in me. Lord, give me the words to say. You said in the last days, you'd give us the words to say in these are the last days, Lord. Lord, help me to speak the truth in love about the topic you put in my topic you put in my heart. And Lord Jesus, bless your people, keep your people, be with your people. We know you love us. You loved us first. We know you created us. We put you high above all. We announce you as the Alpha, the Omega, the King, the the, the Lamb of God that was slain, the one who was and is and is to come. It's Jesus. Jesus, Lord be with us. Jesus protect us while we await your soon return. Amen. Covered by the blood of Jesus, amen. Let's go to the word of God. John 8, 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I want to ask everybody this. What if, what if you don't know the truth and aren't speaking the truth? Are you free? Well, let me ask you that the opposite of this. What if, what if you know a lie and speak a lie? Is that the same as John 8, 32? Is that blessing accounted unto you? If you do the opposite of what the Word of God says, this is very serious. So where is the truth? What is the truth? The, the truth is Jesus Christ. The truth is that he's the Word, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we all beheld his glory. Read John 1, 1 to, to learn who Jesus is. John chapter 1 verse 1 and just keep on reading and don't stop reading I'm telling you let's go to we're going to talk about the two witnesses and god's timeline in the word of god that's where all this truth is in the word of god i want to go to hebrews 4 12. it says for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So what is the intentions of our heart today? While we make videos and comment on videos and encourage each other as we go from channel and, and uh, you know, to, to make it all about Jesus and correct people or love people or pray for people, or commune with people, fellowship with people, what what is in our heart as we do this? Psalm one nineteen eighty nine talking about the word of God here. It says, "Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven." This word I'm presenting to you is already settled in heaven. That's why that's why Jesus said, "Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven." That's why I, we are to study to show ourselves approved through the Word of God, not not YouTube videos. I, Lord Jesus, help me. That's why I put myself through many, many, many classes, years of classes, to learn what the Word of God says, and and then the Holy Spirit. He, he puts the Word of Jesus right in your heart, and it's forever settled. And so when you bind things on earth, they were already bound in heaven. The kingdom of God is, is within us. So in other words, right now, I just, I bind the spirit of confusion in the name of Jesus. So now what I did was I, I did what Jesus told me I could do 
through him and his power and authority. But please understand, it was already bound in heaven first. The keys to binding and loosing, amen. So so what we're going to talk about in this holy divine logos, the, the written word of God that's alive and powerful and, and cuts us right, you know, right through us to get to our intentions of why we're on here speaking, it's already settled in heaven. So what's settled? Let's go see. I'm talking about the two witnesses. This is all inspired by the Lord. But let me just tell you something. I was laying there last night and I was thinking about all these videos and, you know, for years and years speculating about who the two witnesses are. And as I lay there last night, I, I just couldn't fall asleep. I'm thinking, finally, I had this peace come upon me and peace should come upon all of us as we lay in bed at night when we're serving Jesus Christ. We don't go to bed in fear and confusion and doubt when we know his word, his promises that's forever settled in heaven. We could, we could trust him and have faith in him that he is going to perform this word, all of it. But what are we speaking? What are we speaking? The truth word or because, you know, what comes out of our mouth can defile us. What comes in doesn't defile us. If you put the word of God in, truth should come out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I was thinking, you know what? For me, Paul Maxson in Northern California, it does not matter to me who the two witnesses are. Now, I can go on, on my, my teaching that I was taught, you know, and raised on is that it would be Enoch and Elijah because they never died. And it is a point of man wants to die. The only exclusion from that is the rapture. But also, so there's that or there's Enoch and Moses. I am convinced, but look, I can be wrong. Because the Bible doesn't clearly say. I, I, I don't know. It, it could be Moses. Because in the Holy Bible, again, deferring to the Word of God here, it said God buried Moses. I find that interesting. And to this day, no one has ever found his body. I'm paraphrasing. Um, so, as I lay there and I'm thinking, you know, the truth is that it doesn't really matter to me who the two witnesses are. What matters to me is, is what I'm doing for Jesus, working for him while I wait the rapture. Because the truth is, the two witnesses appear after the rapture has happened, exactly three and a half years into the time where I want to be gone. And I'll explain that. Just give me a moment. Please let me explain this in the Word. And uh, so, I mean, why, why am I preaching and teaching on the two witnesses? When I could be teaching and preaching on the word of God and things that the bride of Christ is waiting for and the lost and leading the lost in and, you know, helping the homeless and, you know, helping widows. And does it really matter who the two are? That's God's job after three and a half years of tribulation to Jerusalem to witness to the Jews and the world. And many will be saved because of it. But here's the truth. If you're serving Jesus Christ with all your heart, body, mind, and soul and submitted your life to him and are covered in the blood and redeemed from the curse, then you won't be here. See what I mean? Let God do his job. Why do we keep trying to do God's job for him? So in Daniel 9, now this, this just came all up this morning real quick, just boom, boom, boom. Because I studied the word and I was taught the word. And, but the Holy Spirit can lead you into all truth. So please allow the Holy Spirit right now to lead you to the truth. In Jesus' name, I pray this. Amen. So we're, we're talking about seven years, and I'm in Daniel 9 right now, the Amplified Greek. And we're just going to go flow this through here. I won't be long. And then we'll go up to like uh, verse 24, 70 weeks. 70 weeks of years or, or 490 years have been decreed for your people in the holy city, Jerusalem, to finish transgression, to make an end of sins, to make atonement, uh, reconciliation for wickedness. And let's go down here. Verse 25. This has not happened yet. This is by Daniel the prophet in the word of God. It's end time prophecy. So you are to know and understand let understanding come in Jesus' name. Let people be set free. People be set free in Jesus' name. That from the issuance of the command to restore and rebuild 
Jerusalem. This is the covenant of many being confirmed. And the United Nations is working on it right now. Until the, and, and, and uh, of course, Obama's with them working on this also. Until the come in many people, probably even Trump, who knows. To me, I just, I'm going to trust and, and have faith that I'm going to be caught up out of here, snatched up. Until the coming of the Messiah, okay, until the rapture, right? The anointed one, the prince, there will be seven weeks, look, years. So seven years. Okay, so that's where people get the seven-year timeline from the Word of God, okay? Not dreams and visions. And, and, then, and then it says, okay, now watch this. In 62 weeks of years, it would be built again. So we're talking about, we're talking about the temple in, in the, the mount, the, the temple in the mount in Jerusalem. It's in Jerusalem. It's not in Ohio. It's not in Northern California. I can't find it. Never been to Israel. I, I say it's in Israel in Jerusalem because the Bible says that. The Bible says that that Israel is the apple of God's eye. The Bible, it, 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 Jesus went down to Jerusalem. I mean, let's continue. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> okay, so the temple is going to be rebuilt again. This hasn't happened yet, and they haven't stopped the offerings in Jerusalem and changed the this. It hasn't happened yet, and I'm going to prove it here. 26, and then after the 62 weeks of years, the anointed one, this is Jesus Christ, will be cut off. See, Jesus hasn't been cut off yet. I'm just trying to help. And denied his messianic kingdom and have nothing and no one to defend him. And the people of the other prince who is to come, the Santa Christ, will destroy the city and the sanctuary. This hasn't happened yet. Its end will come with the flood. Even till the end, there will be war. Desolations are determined. So in other words, there's a seven year timeline of tribulation. The first three and a half years are tribulation. The second, right in the middle point, it says in the middle, uh, the Antichrist rises up in Jerusalem at the temple. Please hear me now. And, and then everything changes. We start going into the seals and the trumpets and the bowls. Exactly three and a half years into it. So what right now, what those people that know the word of God are waiting for is for the covenant of many to be confirmed. But see, Jesus Christ, he could come at any minute. There's nothing that has to happen anymore in the word of God for Jesus to return. But once that covenant of many is confirmed, that Daniel's talking about here. And I mean, it's they're working on it right now. You can know by that point, the church is no longer here based on the word of God. So the 144,000, the two witnesses, if you're planning to go into that, you're planning on missing the rapture and going into not only tribulation, but great tribulation and accepting the mark and all that. So, and he will, and okay, so let's go to the word of God. 27. Daniel 9, 27, and he will enter, this the Antichrist, not Christ, the Antichrist, he will enter into a binding and irrevocable covenant with the many. These are the, the, the mingled nations, the nations that are surrounding Israel, etc. For one week, look, seven years. Seven years. But in the middle of the week, so what's a half of seven? It's three and a half years. This is really broke down in the Bible about the 42 months. It's all over the Bible is what I'm trying to say. There's no changing it. It's already been settled in heaven that this is what's going to happen. So he's going to stop. So the Antichrist is going to set up temple in Jerusalem, which is actually the very center of the world. Did you know that? And he's going to stop the sacrifice and grain offerings for the remaining three and a half years. The great tribulation. So... You go into tribulation for the first three and a half years. The Antichrist exposes himself and he says, I'm Christ. And he does it in the temple and starts changing the way Jerusalem runs concerning the law and sacrifice. This has not happened yet. Right now in the name of Jesus on 126, 2017 at 7.32 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, they still allow sacrifice and grain offerings in Jerusalem. Easily provable. And the Antichrist isn't sitting there. And the third temple hasn't been rebuilt yet. And on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate. Please know this is the abomination 
of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Complete destruction. So the Holy Spirit led me to 2 Thessalonians 2. We're going to start at verse 4. Who opposes and exalts himself so proudly and so instantly above every so-called God or object of worship so that he actually enters in and takes a sit in the temple of God. You know what this is? Jerusalem. In the temple mount. Hasn't done this yet. Publicly proclaiming that he himself is God. Hasn't happened yet. Therefore, the two witnesses can't be here yet. I'm just reading the word of God. I'm trying to help somebody. And I'm helping myself by doing this too. I need to stay grounded. Do you not remember that I was still with you? I was telling you these things. And you know what restrains him now? So now we're talking about the restrainer. When the restrainer lifts, the church is gone. From being revealed, uh, it is so that he will be revealed at his own appointed time. Not our time. God's time. For the mystery of lawlessness, rebellion against divine authority, and the coming reign of lawlessness is already at work. But it is restrained. See, everything's still restrained right now as I speak. But there's coming a day where it won't be restrained. Hasn't happened yet. Only until he who now restrains is taken out of the way. Holy Spirit. You could disagree if you want, all right, because I could prove it. Then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed, and the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and bring him to an end of the appearance of his coming. The coming of the Antichrist, the lawless one, is through the activity of Satan intended with great power and lying wonders. Okay, so this is tying into Daniel 9. Are you with me? And it hasn't happened yet. I'm still here. I trust Jesus. Do we trust Jesus to take us up when the trump blows? Because if not, then we have no faith. And Jesus is looking for what when he returns? Faith. He's coming back. The first time it says in the book of Thessalonians, he's in the clouds. The second time he actually takes, literally stands in Jerusalem. There's two. There's the, there's the Harposo rapture. And then the second coming. The two witnesses are three and a half years in. Right here. See, look. And it, they're three and a half years in. And, and, and I want to go to Revelation 11. Talking about the two witnesses. So here it's talking about building the temple. Right? And again, it says, now listen. Because it has been given to the Gentiles, the nations... They will trample the holy city for 42 months, three and a half years. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses. Now here's the thing. When the two witnesses is here, this is the second half of the three and a half years of the seven years. Because this other stuff that Daniel prophesied and Jesus spoke about hasn't happened yet. And the church is still here. The witnesses cannot come according to the word of God while the church is here. That's why we're leaving. Otherwise, why don't we just all go to Israel and start witnessing? Well, because that's what the two witnesses in 144,000 here. The saints, after the church is gone, are going to do Jesus' witness for him. And while we're with him. <clears throat> and they will prophesy for 1260 days, 42 months, or again, three and a half years exactly, Lining up with what Daniel spoke with no conflict or error or contradiction, dressed in sackcloth. And the, so here they are. So, so, and then it talks about looking, shutting up the skies. And so, in a nutshell, a covenant is going to be confirmed. And, it, and, and it's coming. They're working on it right now. In between then, we could be raptured any time. A seven-year timeline will start and they will be... Uh, there will be three and a half years. And then, the, and, and, and during that three and a half years, the church is gone. And things get really, really bad for the world. But they get horrible three and a half years into it when the Antichrist, who fooled everybody, says, You know what? I'm Christ. And I'm going to sit in this temple and I'm going to change the laws and, and, and uh, the sacrifices. And at this point, all of this stuff opens up. So, 
There's so many people telling you that Revelation 6, all the seals are open, the trumpets are blown. But here's the thing. Let, let's just go through these seals. The conqueror, that's the Antichrist. This is Revelation 6. The second seal, war. The third seal, famine. The fourth seal, death. The fifth seal, martyrs. These are souls under the altar. And the sixth seal, terror. Let's just read a little bit of this. Okay, so we're not here yet. This can't happen <clears throat> till after the church is removed. So many people say, and I'm one of the, <clears throat> excuse me, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I'm one of the 144,000. I know who the two witnesses are. You know, I'm a tribulation saint. The, the rapture's at the end of the tribulation. But see, it doesn't line up with the word of God. And we got to stick to this because it's already settled in heaven and our future depends on it. So it says, I, I looked when he, the lamb, broke open the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. Hasn't happened yet. And the sun became black as sun cloth made of hair. Hasn't happened yet. The moon became blood, and the stars of the sky fell from earth. Hasn't happened yet. Now, now let's go down here, and I've spoke on this many times. The kings of the earth, and the great men, and the military commanders, and the wealthy, and the strong, and everyone, whether f slave or free, let me tell you something. Right now, we have a, a billionaire running the United States in the highest position there is. He's not hiding in a cave saying, mountain, please fall down on me. Therefore, it hasn't happened yet. And people are teaching this, that we're already in this. They hid themselves in the caves of the rocks, and they called upon the mountains, rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. You know why they're hiding? Because the Antichrist is in power, and there's no turning back, and, and the, the Holy Spirit is no longer here. The restrainer has stopped restraining, and they're in the thick of it. And from the, ratchet, the righteous wrath and indignation of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath and vengeance and retribution has come. And who is able to face God and stand before the wrath of the Lamb? There's, it's impossible for be, us to be in the wrath of God because we are, we are the church. We are the church. That's why the, the book of Revelation, if you truly reveal, uh, read it, Jesus Christ reveals through the spirit of prophecy who he is and what's going to come in the seven churches. In verse 2 and 3, and he, he commands them all with warnings to repent and tells you exactly why. And then in verse 4, he says, come up hither. And now the church is gone. And it's not anywhere mentioned in the, in the rest of the chapters anymore. Because the bride isn't here. If you hear someone saying that the two witnesses are here, or, you know, they're there, or they're the one in 144,000, I'm just telling you with all my heart, and this is not against anybody, this is about this, knowing the truth and being set free, is that we are not here. Therefore, what they're saying does not line up with the word of God. And rather encourage them, promote them, you know, they should be corrected. Simple as that. Because you can't be set free from lies. And God is looking at your heart right now. And what its intentions are. He wants us all to go to heaven. And so do I.